This is the HMNS Beyond Bones podcast. You've got your mental curator, Johnny Hamburger, and welcome to the daily recap of HMNS's Dino Dig. 2022. So in this podcast, I want to provide a recap for the day. In the case of this inaugural podcast, it is the recap of day zero, which was a travel day and day one. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Let's jump into all the goodies of Dino Dig 2022. First, we arrive in Rapid City, South Dakota, where we check into the famous Rushmore Hotel. We spend the afternoon resting from a long journey. I think our flights left Houston at least at 6 a.m. or thereabouts. We had to be at the airport a couple hours early. You know how that goes. So a little bit of rest after checking into the Rushmore Hotel was very welcome. But it was not all just rest. It's not all just kicking your feet up because one of the things that Rapid City is famous for is that almost every street corner has a monument to all of our past presidents. So this is an area where our own James Washington shines. After dinner, he led a voluntary tour of these presidents. So we walked around Rapid City. We walked to each of these presidential memorials, these presidential monuments, and James gave us basically a brief overview of each president. And you know what? Better than me just kind of recapping what that was all about right here. I'm going to do, I'm going to give you all a little bit of a sample. I put a microphone on James. So I'm going to give a little sample here of what that voluntary tour sounded like. Here's James. Okay, so the sad thing about Hoover is that we in America see him as the president who lost the the Great Depression, basically. But honestly, if you go to Europe, particularly Belgium, he's a hero. He fed Europe because during, you know, after World War One, everything fell apart. It was bombed out and everything. So he actually organized and fed the whole, you know, Europe. And they love him there to this day. But because that, that last thing in his administration here, plus FDR, we now know from release documentation that he actually was doing things to kind of suppress what he was trying to do and he took some of his ideas and put them in place. Now one of the most notable aspects of this voluntary tour is that as we went from street corner to street corner the crowd around us grew little by little. Stragglers and other tourists just walking around glommed onto our group which was such an amazing feeling. It's it's such a wonderful thing. If anyone's not experienced James Washington in his element you really should do so. And it's a testament to his character, it's a testament to his knowledge that he can conduct this voluntary tour and have people that we don't know. We don't know what part of the country they're from, we don't know what part of the world they're from, but they just add themselves to our group because James is so knowledgeable and engaging. After that voluntary presidential tour around Rapid City, we retire to our bedrooms to get ready for day one of Dino Dig 2022. And I'll just tell you right now, we day one did not consist of actual digging up dinosaurs. We did go to the Black Hills Institute to meet uh, the institute that was going to be in charge of our Dino Dig. So we did all these kind of precursor explorations so that we would fully appreciate what we we're doing when we dig tomorrow. So as of recording right now, we officially start our dig at the Wa Quarry tomorrow. So make sure you're subscribed to the HMNS Beyond Bones podcast so you don't miss that. It's going to be very, very exciting. After Rapid City, we woke up, we departed, and we left for the Black Hills Caverns, which is a cave system in the Black Hills region, Black Hills National Forest of South Dakota. The cave system was amazing, not for the least of which reasons is that the Black Hills Caverns, the temperature stays pretty steady between 48 and 52 degrees Fahrenheit, which is amazing feeling when it's darn near 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So even not even considering all the fascinating things that we found in the cave that we'll get to in a minute. Just the refreshment of feeling that air, walking out of a 95 degree heat, 90 degree heat, whatever it was, into that refreshing blast of coolness was just such an amazing feeling. But one of the goals of this podcast is to make you, the listener, 
gain a bit of a better understanding of what it was like to be here without actually being here. So while we were in the caves and when we exited the caves, I stuck my little tape recorder, yeah, tape recorder like it's 1985 and I had a micro cassette. Now I had a digital recorder and I got some of the insight from the travelers in the group. But before I play those sound bites, I want to play the sound bite from our tour guide, Logan, who gives us a recap of what the Black Hill Caverns are all about and their history. So our cave was found in the late 1800s by a man named Calvin Mead. It was originally used as like basically a gold mine is what they were looking for down there. They left it later, probably about 30 years after they found it, just because it is very, very rare to find gold inside of a limestone cave. And so nowadays we use it as like a, uh, like a tourist attraction, give cave tours all the time. Um, yeah, it's got uh, stalactites, stalagmites, about 30 different formations in there, including calcite, crystal, halagtites, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Uh, dolomite too, right? Dolomite as well, yeah, and we go about 225 feet underground. Logan was an excellent tour guide at the Black Hills Caverns, and what I can't understand, though, one thing that's puzzling me this entire day is how such a young kid had so many dad jokes on the tour. So many dad jokes from such a young child of a boy. <laughs> so anyway, so we just heard from Logan, the tour guide. I wanted to hear some experiences from some of the members of the group. So let's hear from Monica. It was a lot of fun. I wish we could have, you know, gone into the little crevices. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of stairs that led to places that I don't know what's inside. So that would have been cool. But it was really... It was awesome. Well, I tasted some cave water. Were you supposed to? No. And then I I smelt, I don't remember the name, but it was in Hershey bars. It used to be an ingredient. And I smelled it and they told me that it can cause lung cancer. But I sniffed it, so. I think it was dolomite. <laughs> but yeah. I'll, I'll reconfirm. I think it's that, so, you know. So what was your favorite part overall? The phosphorescent. I Rocks. think, no, the last place that we went, um, and someone got married there, I don't remember oh, yeah. his name, but that was like the coolest, that was the coolest place. That little, that chamber, yeah. cha chamber, chapel chamber, yeah. something like that. Yeah, it was that. really cool. Yeah, tour guide Logan mentioned that somebody a few decades ago got married down in the cavern, just got married down at one of the lowest points in the cavern, which is about 225 feet uh, below the surface and that was a very cool story and we immediately asked can you book weddings can you still book weddings here and unfortunately you can't and that made me just kind of think not to get too sidetracked here of an entire wedding party so not just the not just the preacher not just you know the, the father of the bride and, and the different family members on each side it's it's not a difficult trek to get down there, but you got to go down and you got to get back out. So I'm just thinking, did they bring an altar down there? What kind of equipment did they bring down there? The, the lights and, and maybe camera gear and, and what else goes along with the wedding? Little decorations here and there. How They got that all down there and then they got that all back up. It You hear the term destination wedding and usually that, you know, you think of going to get married in Hawaii and flying family members out to Hawaii for a quote unquote destination wedding but man as far as a destination wedding is concerned i think getting married down in a cave is pretty high up there so while we're at a hearing from the group i mentioned james washington earlier who gave us the presidential tours in rapid city he also came down in the caves with us and i asked him what he thought it's really great it's really cool a lot of calcite everywhere calcite everywhere Calcite. What's special about calcite? It's a very common mineral, but it forms in many different ways, many habits, we call it. So, you know, there's crystal structures, but then there's actual just growth patterns. That's very cool. Does it have any properties that uh, react with light? Yes. Uh, our curator, David, has been shining black light, not black light, um, the other one, black fluorescent lights on them the entire time. Even when the tour guide's talking, he'll shine the light on it. <laughs> and we all look at it because it's bright and shiny. And then it holds its glow for a little bit because it's phosphorescent? Yes. Which I think he's a witch, but you know, I don't know what that is. <laughs> One more time. What was that? Was that about David? I think when he does that, he's being a witch, like a witchcraft person, but I can't burn him now because we're underground. Well, but as soon as we're at the surface, like, like. Oh, it's on. Yeah, it's on. 
We need to see the way somehow, so maybe we can just start down here. Yeah. <laughs> no curators were practicing witchcraft, nor were burned at any point out of or within the cave. It's 2022, y'all. I have to make that disclaimer officially. Anyways, let's hear from one more member of our group, our own Sarah Stanton. It's pretty amazing. There are lots of rocks everywhere. What's your favorite part? Um, David taking over the tour and talking about the rocks rather than the history of the cave. And adding two hours to the tour just for nonsense. True, but it's probably the most fun nonsense we'll have, so... Absolutely. <laughs> we pick on David Temple a bit. That's going to be a common theme with these group outings that David's a part of. It's all love for David. David's one of the smartest people around. He is definitely, since he's the curator of paleontology, he is somebody you want around on a dino dig. So that's why he's with us. David can take it as well as he can give it. So there is no love lost there, and it is all fun. David's actually one of the reasons why y'all should sign up for the next outing. He is just a ton of fun and a blast to be around. The whole entire group is just the most amazing group of people. If I may just speak freely for a moment, just for myself, I noticed that even when I was sitting on the plane next to James Washington, next to David Temple, that these are my people. These are the most uh, eccentric in the best way possible, funniest, most intelligent, easygoing people that I've ever been around. It's just amazing. You, you feel better for being around these people. I'm not just talking about museum staff. I'm talking about just other members of the group. They make you better. The conversation's better. The conversation is, is more stimulating. The conversation is funnier. The conversation's more lighthearted. The conversation is more more revealing and more nurturing for the soul. So it doesn't matter where we're going in the world or what we're doing. The group we're with with HMNS makes you a better person from day one. From the first time you sit down on an airplane seat next to one of your fellow group members, you start to become a better person. It is such an amazing experience. Now before we move on to the next stop of day one, I wanted to mention those rocks that David was, was shining his uh, phosphorescent uh, flashlight on. So we all know and we've all seen glow in the dark products. You know, one of the things I think of uh, back from when I was a kid is I had these adhesive kind of glow in the dark stickers of stars that I'd put all over my ceiling so that when my mom or dad turn off the light when I go to bed, I would have constellations and, you know, the Big Dipper and Orion and all sorts of stars all over my ceiling that would glow and they would eventually dim and go dark. Well, that happens naturally in nature, and you can find them at the Black Hills Caverns, and I would imagine other caves as well. It's really cool to see David, in this case, shine a flashlight on these rocks, charge them up, as he would say, for a few seconds, and then turn off his flashlight, and the rock would be glowing in the spot where the flashlight was shining. Not only that, but you could he can make patterns on the rock with the flashlight, and it would leave a little green trail behind the flashlight, uh, on the rock. So at the end of this trip, I am also the HMS YouTube manager and I am working on a grandiose video to show you all of these amazing things. So make sure you are subscribed to the HMS YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, type in HMS or Houston Museum of Natural Science, or better yet, in this podcast description will be a link right to our YouTube channel. I'm going to show you everything I've been talking about in this podcast. So make sure you get subscribed. I brought my drone on this trip. There are some epic drone shots of everything we've been doing. So speaking of epic drone shots and kind of the, the next stop of uh, day one, we went to visit the Black Hills Institute of Geological Research, specifically the museum at Black Hills Institute. The Black Hills Institute, or BHI, is who is helping facilitate our dino dig, our excavation of, of bones and fossils from the Wa Quarry. So we went to pay them a visit in their, on their turf. You know, if they come to the Houston Museum of Natural Science, they're on our turf. We went to their turf at the museum at Black Hills Institute, saw uh, where Stan came from, where Ryrex came from, where Bucky came from, got more history on, on our specimens. 
but we also were able to learn so much more about what goes into uh, digging up dinosaurs, which we will experience firsthand tomorrow. And believe me, I will fill you in on on the next podcast. But after we went to the, from the Black Hills Institute, we went to the Homestake Mine. Actually, we went there after we had some lunch. The Homestake Mine is a very uh, historical mine shaft that's still in, that's still working. Now, it's not necessarily mining ore. It's not mining copper anymore. It's not mining gold or silver from back in its heyday in a town called Lead. But what it is now is they're using the mines about 5,000, about a mile below the surface to hunt for neutrinos. And one of the reasons, so neutrinos are firing out of the sun. It's part of the, the cosmic background. They're very hard to detect. And one of the reasons why neutrinos are very hard to detect on the surface of the earth is that there is so much background noise, so much distortion, if you will, in the form of gamma rays and, and other forms of radiation and infrared and sunlight and radio waves, that the way you test for neutrinos, the way you hunt for neutrinos is that you have to go way below the surface of the earth. You have to go through these special chemicals, liquefied uh, gases in their liquid in their liquid state to hunt for neutrinos. And a very brief overview, and I'll, I'll go over this more in the video, but how they find neutrinos is it interacts with argon, liquid argon, and creates a flash. And when you see a flash, you know that a neutrino has interacted uh, with with us here on Earth, and that's how you count it. The, detecting neutrinos will, just like the James Webb Space Telescope just went up and is going to help us understand the universe even better, neutrino science will help us also understand our universe better. Hunting neutrinos, detecting neutrinos, even going so far as crashing neutrinos into each other with a sort of collider that they're working on, which is going to be unveiled tentatively in the year 2024. Uh, this is going to help help us understand our universe all the more. So we went to the, the Homestake mine. We got to see these cables. How much do you think an elevator cable a mile long ways. It was something on the order of 16 tons just for the cable. And we saw these massive, utterly massive pulleys that were used to raise these elevators up and down. And it, it, the size is so gargantuan, it, it boggles the mind. And it's all the other more reason that you should subscribe to HMNS on YouTube, because believe you me, I've documented all of this in glorious 4K up to and including just spectacular drone footage. So that is where we went after lunch. We went to the Homestake Mine. After the Homestake Mine, we checked into our hotel, the Devil's Tower Inn. We made our way into Wyoming. We are in Hewlett, Wyoming, and we are staying at the Devil's Tower Inn. As you're driving up to Hewlett, as you're driving into Hewlett, you see the men it's, it's menacing and awe-inspiring, all the adjectives. Uh, Devil's Tower, I hate to use the word looming on the horizon, but it's towering over almost everything around it. You cannot miss it on the horizon. You know you're in Hewlett, Wyoming when you see Devil's Tower. It is such an amazing sight to behold. I'm going to take drone of it. I'm going to take more glorious 4K footage of it. Make sure you subscribe to the HMNS uh, YouTube channel to see all of that. After checking in, as you can imagine, as I've been speaking here on this podcast, it is a, it's been a full day. It's been an entire experience just in day zero and in day one of Dino Dig 2022. But we checked into the Devil's Tower Inn here in Hewlett, Wyoming. We made our way over to dinner at the Ponderosa, where we enjoyed much more lively conversation, where we got to meet our fellow travelers even better. Here's the thing, you're, you're not going to be without a friend. Even if you join one of these groups on one of our excursions, you will not be without a friend for more than five minutes. You are going to make friends for life on this adventure. I'm going to wrap up the podcast this evening with this. We are 18, 19 minutes into this first podcast of just what we've experienced making our way to the Waw Quarry to do our dino dig. This is just what's happened over the last two days of traveling. I cannot wait to tell you what we find in the quarry. 
Thank you so much for listening to the HMS Beyond Bones podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. Tell all your friends about it. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you share the link on your Facebook pages and your in your uh, Twitters and all your social medias. If you find something like this fascinating, it's only going to get better from here. Can you believe it? It's only going to get even better from here. Thank you so much for listening. I've been Johnny Hamburger, your mental curator, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Stay tuned and stay curious. Curious.